This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this t-shirt design using Affinity Designer. So I'll go ahead and get started here by closing out of this, and I'm going to create a new document and size it at 1000 pixels width and 1000 pixels height, and the DPI set to 300. Then I'll go ahead and click Create. So the first thing I want to do here is create a circle to apply to the uh, artboard here that we're going to use to wrap the text around. So I'm going to come over here to the ellipse tool. I'm going to click and drag to create this ellipse, and then I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard to lock the proportions like that. And then I want to center this up on the artboard. So I'll grab this selection tool over here, and I'll just center this up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. And then I will resize this circle as needed. I will click and drag one of these handles right here, then hold control and shift so it scales it from the center and locks the proportions. I want this circle to be about that big relative to the artboard. I'm just eyeballing it here. There's no specific measurement. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the artistic text tool and I want to put some text around this circle. So I'm going to take the cursor with the text tool, put the cursor over the edge of the path right there. And if you notice, the cursor icon changes from a letter A to a letter T with a squiggly line under it. Once you see that icon change, that's how you know you are clear to click on that path and every all of the text that you generate will be wrapping around that path right there. So I'm going to write here for this demonstration, Affinity Designer T-Shirt Design. Obviously, you can write whatever you'd like. Well, let's change the font of this now. I'm going to press Control A to select all of the text. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to change the font to something else. I'm going to use Lead Gothic. You can use whatever font you'd like. I just think this font looks well for this sort of design. And I want to take this little green triangle right here and bring this towards the bottom left quadrant. It should snap the bottom left quadrant of this uh, circle right here. And I want to take this orange triangle and snap this to the bottom right quadrant over here. This represents the start point and the end point of the text. Over here, the green one is the start point of the text. Over here is the end point of the text. And right here, I still have the text selected. I want to center this up so it's going along the top of the circle like this. So I'm going to align this text to the center up here. And now I want to make this a little bigger so it it, it encompasses more of the circle here. So I'm going to come up here. I'm just going to hover my, curse, my, my, my cursor over the uh, size right there. And I'm just going to roll up the mouse wheel like that. And that right there is what I'm looking for. And maybe I'll make it about that big. And then from here on out, I'll fill out that space by uh, spacing the letters out. So to space the letters out, I'm going to hold Alt on the keyboard and use the right arrow key like that. There you go. That looks pretty good. I'll leave that just as it is. And what you can do now is let's go to the Select tool. Let's go to Layer, and I'm looking for Convert to Curves. And that's going to finalize that text as it is. And now I want to ungroup this. So let's go over here to Layer, Ungroup All, and it's going to ungroup every single letter into its own layer, as you can see here. And then we'll go to Layer, Geom Geometry, and select Add. And it's going to unify it all together. That's important for what we're going to do later on. Now let's create another circle. So let's come over here to the Circles, uh, to the Ellipse tool. Click and drag on the canvas like this. Hold Shift to lock the proportions. Let's take this ellipse over here in the Layer menu and just bring this down beneath the text. Grab the Select tool, center this up on the vertical and horizontal axis, and then scale this up as needed. Uh, again, holding Control and Shift so that we're scaling it from the center and we're locking the proportions like that. And if you notice what I'm doing here, notice the blue outline the edge of the circle. It's going about roughly halfway through the text like that. That right there is what I'm looking for. So now let's come over here to the color tab. Let's remove the fill color from this and let's select the stroke color right here. And let's give this a different stroke color. Let's make this maybe red or maybe even like yellow, something different, something that contrasts well with black here. And I want to take the opacity of that stroke and bring that down. We're going to need that to be about roughly in half. And then I'll come over here to the Stroke tab, and I can just take this and enlarge this like this. And if you see what's happening here, we now have our banner for the text like that. Even though there's a little bit of discrepancy between the spacing here and the spacing there, we can go ahead and fix that real quick by just taking this and just resizing it as needed. There we go. That, that right there looks pretty good. I'll maybe even make this stroke a little thinner. I don't want it that thick. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. Make sure where it says scale with object, make sure you have this unchecked right here. It should be unchecked by default, but if it's if it's checked, go ahead and uncheck that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a duplicate of this yellow stroke right here. I'm going to come over here to this ellipse layer, right click on that and go to duplicate. And then I want to take the one on the bottom 
and I want to make this a different color. So let's come back up here to the color tab and let's make this something different, like maybe green. Or you know what, maybe even like purple so it contrasts better. And I want to take this and scale this down. Again, holding Control and Shift while doing this. I want to scale this down a little bit. Maybe about right there looks pretty good. And then what I will do is I will go to Layer and I'm going to select Expand Stroke. And then I will select the layer above that, which is the yellow ring, and go to Layer, Expand Stroke. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rectangle to uh, create the bottom of the banner over here. So let me move down like this. To move the page, I'm just pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. Let's grab the rectangle tool right here and click and drag to create a rectangle. I'm going to hold shift so it makes a, a perfect square like that. Let's get rid of the stroke color. Let's select the fill color and give this a different fill color, maybe uh, something like blue, something that contrasts well. And I want to rotate this around so that it's the corners are going vertically and horizontally. So I'm going to bring the cursor to the top right corner over here, this node, and I'm going to bring it just outside until it turns into that little elbow arrow right there, that little rotation icon, and then just rotate that around. Hold shift so that it locks it onto 20 degree uh, increments like that. And we end up with a, a square where the corners are going vertically and horizontally like that. Grab the select tool, bring this right about over here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. To zoom out, I'm just holding control and rolling up and down the mouse wheel. Let me make this a little bigger. I'm going to hold shift so it locks the proportions like that. Let me bring this down. Again, if I'm, when I'm moving this up and down, I want to hold shift while I'm doing this so it locks it onto the vertical axis. I don't want this going off center from the canvas. And I want to place this square right about here relative to the text. I want to have some padding between the text and the square right there. And that right there looks pretty good. So let's create a duplicate of this square. Let's come up here to the rectangle, right click on that and go to duplicate. And then hold shift and click on, we're going to hold shift and click on the yellow ring right there and go to layer, geometry, subtract. And then we're going to take this blue square over here, bring this up, hold shift and click and drag to bring this up to about here. Duplicate that by right clicking that and going to duplicate. And then hold shift, click on the pink ring right there, that smaller one, and go to layer, geometry, and intersect. And then finally, we want to take the, re the rectangle right here. Let's take the layer, the rectangle layer, and click and drag this above the curve right there, that pink curve. And let's just bring this down, holding shift to lock it onto the vertical axis like that. We want to bring that down to about there. Hold shift, click on that pink object right there, and go to layer, geometry, subtract. Okay, so now we have what looks like um, the uh, the banner here is starting to take to form. So let me zoom in a little bit. I'm going to hold control, roll up the mouse wheel a couple of times. I want to make these into little fish tails right here. So to do that, I'm going to grab the node tool, which is right here. And I'm going to click right about there to add a point. And I'm going to take that point and just click and drag it in like that. And I'll do the same thing over here. Click right here to add a point. Click and drag that in like that. There you go. Now we're looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is let me grab the select tool. Let me take this yellow ring right here. I want to make a duplicate copy of this. So I'm going to right click on that layer and go to duplicate. And then I want to make, let's make this a different color so we can differentiate it better. Let's make this green. And I want to come over here to the corners tool, or actually the contour tool. If you click on the contour tool right there, we're going to have this little handle that shows up when you do that. I'm going to click and drag this to the right so that it creates a little bit of an offset there. Now, if you notice, the corners of the offset here are rounded. I don't want rounded corners. I want squared corners. So I'm going to come up here to where it says Contour Type, and I'm going to select this option right here in the middle that says Miter. There we go. And now I just want to click the button that says Bake Appearance. That will allow us to use that as a, uh, as, as a path. Grab the Select tool. Hold Shift. Click on those little uh, fishtail ribbons right there, and go to Layer, Geometry, and Subtract. Now what we can do is we can click on the text, hold shift, click on the banner right there, go to layer, geometry, subtract. And now what we can do is we can click and drag over everything, bring the opacity of it all the way up, and then just make this black. Or you can make it whatever color you want. I'm just going to make it black for this demonstration. And what you have here, you have a banner with letters around it. And these letters are negative space, meaning you could change the color of that banner to whatever you want, as you see me doing here. So let me just make that black again. And what I'm going to do now is, uh, at this point, you can add whatever you want in here. For this demonstration, I added the Affinity Designer logo in here. So I'm just going to 
come over here to my other screen where I have that and just click and drag that onto the canvas. Obviously, you can use whatever you want here. You can put your own logo there. You can put um, some kind of icon or maybe even text if you want, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to use this Affinity Designer logo to put that in there. I'm going to center this up on the vertical axis. And then I want to put some text on either side here that says Established 2014. So let me grab the text tool. Let me click on the canvas right there and I'm just going to write EST. Let me uh, control A to select it all and go back to my uh, font before, which is Lead Gothic, the font that I was using for the text here. Grab the select tool, move this over here, make this a little bigger. There we go. And then I want to hold Alt and click and drag it over here and then hold Shift to lock it onto the horizontal axis. And now we have a copy of this text right here. Let me go back to the text tool and just change this to 2014, which uh, is the year Affinity Designer was founded. And I'll just move that over using the arrow keys just to adjust the position like that. Maybe even make this a little bigger. You can go ahead and adjust the sizing as needed. Move that over. Move that over. And there you go. We are finished. At this point now, you can go ahead and, and export this as a PNG image or a PDF image or whatever, whatever file format your uh, print service requires for you to upload. And there you go. Now you can use that as a t-shirt design. So that's how you can go about designing this simple t-shirt design using Affinity Designer. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.